think we're almost ready to get started now, guys. I think Kieran is on the line. And uh, if you guys want to gather, kind of try and get closer to the center. So in case we do have you on the camera, we can actually have you come and speak at the microphone here if you have any questions as we get started in the presentation. So um, first of all, I want to thank all of the folks that uh, showed up here this afternoon, particularly the paintless dent repair guys. Uh, got a chance to meet some of you guys for the first time. And um, it's, it, you guys got a really neat, diverse group. Uh, Luke was with us yesterday golfing, and uh, we just had a great time. So thanks for coming out, Luke. And uh, it's just nice to get to meet you. For the rest of you guys, uh, I, I kind of know you by name, but I don't know you personally. I, I've met a few of you now, so I can put a face to the name, but I do want to uh, maybe ask Merlin Toms just to stand up and be acknowledged. Some guys were asking who, who Merlin is because they didn't know who he was, and uh, I thought I'd better let you at least know that's the guy that kind of contacted me and said, hey, could we get a little bit of help from SAR with uh, PDR accreditation? Um, Kieran and I have had discussions about this just fleetingly. It's been tough with COVID. You know, you don't get a chance to meet and talk in person. And um, we were talking at lunch today. There's, there's, so, there's so much more that you can do when you're in person. And, you know, there's the meeting and then there's the meeting after the meeting and, you know, having a few drinks and you can talk things over. It's hilarious. But, but right now we're going to do the best we can with what we got, which is an online version. And uh, this is kind of the start of a process that, you know, it may take some time to get it all sorted out, but what we want to do is um, try and accommodate everybody, including the insurance company, the body shops, and the paintless dent repair companies. You know, we, we feel there's got to be a place for everybody. If, if one of the stakeholders loses in the deal, it's, it's not a good deal. Does that make sense? So we want to go that route. Um, Kieran Downs is, is online now. I can see him there on the screen. Thanks, Kieran, for... It's death by meeting for you this week, isn't it? Yeah, but that's okay. That's all right. This this is a great opportunity to uh, to connect to ne connect with everybody without being there. So I, I do appreciate that opportunity to do this, and and also um, very much appreciate the uh, the work that uh, SARS put in to making sure that even though we can't be there in person, um, we do have a chance to, uh, to to still connect. Like this is pretty special. This is uh, this is pretty incredible how well this seems to be working. So yeah, thanks. Yeah. It's interesting. We had our meeting back in March and uh, SGI pulled absolutely everybody out of that meeting, but they sent Kieran. I think they were trying to tell him a message like, he's like, Ensign Ricky, you're, you're dispensable or something. I don't know. Sorry, Kieran. But anyway, this year, this time they won't even let him be here. That's how bad it is. Eh? So um, just anyway, guys, to, I hope you all got the email that I sent out. I, I put together just kind of a list of talking points. I, you know, I'm finding is uh, I'm not the sharpest pencil in the case, but I'm finding more and more as we get into these discussions, uh, it's good to have um, kind of a bit of an agenda so we have talking points that we can stick to. And uh, we had our last meeting online with you guys, and I apologize, I lost my audio and visual on my particular computer, so uh, just the audio, sorry. And, uh, but I could watch everybody talk and it was a little tough, but hopefully we don't have any glitches like that today. And thanks to uh, Evan uh, from Aspen Films for helping put this all together. Really appreciate that. Um, if you don't mind, Karen, I'll, I'll maybe I'll just, you know, help kind of frame the meeting. I put together this list. Do you have the list in front of you as well too, Karen? Yep. Nope. We're, we're ready to go here. You betcha. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know if you want to make an opening statement or if you want me to just start going through the list, Karen, what's, what works for you? Well, um, oh shoot, sorry guys, one second here. I'm just, uh, there, there. Okay, good. Um, well, I, I like to make a, I like to make a little bit of an opening statement if that's okay. And and really, I'd like to, to, to concentrate on on the issue of PDR in Saskatchewan and kind of also there's been some discussions around sort of next step. Uh, you know, discussions with uh, which direction SDI is going, uh, those types of things. And and one of the first things I just want to frame, and, and I know I'm speaking to the to the to the choir here, and you folks know as good as anybody how it works. But in Saskatchewan, 
because of the way the insurance is, is arranged in this province, we're, we're very different than the competitive, um, uh, competitive provinces with the competitive insurance uh, schemes. Um, there's, there's a single insurance provider in general, although there are obviously there are some extension policies that are out there, especially around hail, that can help out with things like some dealerships and things, non-registered vehicles. But in general, Within Saskatchewan, um, you know, it, when it comes to, uh, to 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 on road and 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 registered vehicles, we're really obviously we control a significant portion of that of insurance business. And um, one of the things that that that's many companies will do outside the province, as you know, is they will build relationships with certain PDR vendors or 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 collision repair networks for the purposes of creating essentially like a direct repair partner for 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 pdr and uh you know and uh, you know sgi we do operate in alberta um we operate in ontario as well not so much hail out there but you know we're working to understand those relationships there and, and see who we can partner with up in those areas now we have the i don't know if it's a luxury or whatever you want to call it but we can we can pick generally who we want to closely associate ourselves with through things like uh, uh, um, accreditation programs or, or uh, you know, being direct repair partners, DRP shops and, and networks and things like that. In Saskatchewan, um, I, I view that our, our, our accredited repair network here in Saskatchewan is essentially, uh, a, you know, that is our, that is our de direct repair group. And, you know, we don't, we rely heavily right now on our body shops to make those good decisions when it comes to offering sublet services for PDR. And um, one of the, you know, one of the things that we don't necessarily have, uh, 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 you know, great access to or, or understanding of is, you know, what does it take to, what does it take to be a, uh, or what should what should be the minimum requirements to be able to provide a PDR service? What kind of training and technology should should a PDR vendor have in order to ensure that they can provide a safe and quality repair? Because you know the the, the idea of it being uh, uh, you know simply uh, manipulating the panel. Well, the R and R or the R and I is becoming just as important as the PDR itself. And the reason I would say that is because when you remove that mirror. Maybe it's got a 360 view camera in it. When I'm pulling out the side airbags, am I am I unplugging anything? Am I am I? Uh, uh, how do I know that when I put the vehicle back together again that the vehicle is being done is 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 safe for the for to to operate and all the safety systems are operating properly? Those are the kinds of things that I you know I was hoping that we could sort of discuss and and understand through a forum like this and and with a relationship with the PDR folks within within the province but you know for us to, like we're not in a position to have a single dpr partner or, or pdr partner i gotta watch all my acronyms here um the drps and the pdrs but we'll get to it and uh, but the biggest issue for us is um you know we 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 recognize uh, that we have to be have multiple pdr partners for us to be successful and be able to ensure that our customers have access to those repair services in the event of a of a catastrophe a hail cat um, so, you know, one of the things that just, and I, and I like what you said, the elephant in the room in your notes, um, there are no plans for SGI to, to, to right now to sort of align ourselves with a, a single PDR partner. Um, are we open to ideas uh, on how to manage uh, PDR services around the province? Absolutely. You know, are we, are we to the point where, um, you know, if, if that was a sustainable business model and, and, and it was going to work and it was going to, you know, in, in provide exceptional service to our customers, are there things that we could look at at, uh, at creating alignment with certain partners? Possibly, but right now in the current, current uh, uh, the, everything, the way that everything is laid out with us right now, um, I, I think that we're, we're, we have access to a very wide um, network of PDR partners that support our body shops. And we lean on our body shop networks to to quarterback those those hail repairs today, and uh, you know we're not considering moving like I guess I'll put it this way: we have no plans to move away from that model unless you folks maybe there's some ideas you guys might come up with <laughs> during our discussions. But uh, you know right now that's that that's really what the the intent here. So I, I I'd like to open up discussion with that. That you know I'm happy we're happy to sort of gain ideas. We want to listen. 
is really why we're here today is we want to hear what you have to say. We haven't had a chance to connect with everybody out there and we want to hear some of those ideas and, um, and look at ways forward. And, you know, there are some, there are some large firms too that are out there that are providing PDR services. Or, so how do we, how do we interact with those folks and, and gain access to, uh, um, to those types of, uh, of services as well? We don't want to, uh, to isolate any potential partners. Uh, you know, it's all hands on deck in the event of a, an event of a catastrophe. On my list of talking points is that, you know, there's been there's been talk of large national and international firms pitching SGI, and Kieran and I have talked about this in the past, and that you know they they get contacted on numerous occasions from different sources to talk about possible relationships and stuff like that. And like he's saying, it becomes difficult in the government insurance market, public insurance market. You know, their mandate is, is really not to pick winners and losers. Their mandate is to make uh, business available for everybody. And, you know, let the shop that has, uh, you know, the best uh, marketing ability and looks after the customer and does a good job, they win. You know, they don't have DRP relationships where they direct work at this stage in time. So... So talking about that, we've got that elephant in the room out of the way. There's no, there's no national deal or international deal. Are, are they talking about it? They'll probably want to hear what people have to say, right? They want to know what's going on out there. They, they have business in other provinces besides Saskatchewan, and that is a different ball of wax for them. But in this province, they're pretty much in a situation where, you know, if, if, if you meet the qualifications and you want to run a, body shop or a PDR business, you're free to do so. And they're in the business. They're not gonna make a winner or a loser out of you. So having said that, um, you know, we're kind of at this point where it looks like paintless dent repair has kind of come of age. I can still remember the first time I saw PDR, it, it was like magic, you know, somebody coming in pushing the dents out of a hail damaged vehicle. And as a far cry from when the guys used to take the grinder and grind the top off and then take the torch and. <laughs> you know, pop the dents out, oh, what a mess we made, right? But, so here's the question for SGI is, are you open, like right now, we have some PDR companies that have kind of come of age where they're probably capable of handling the claim from start to finish, they don't need a body shop. So uh, traditionally what we've done is we have guys that are partnering with body shops and the body shop handles the admin role and the paintless dent repair technician primarily does the metal work and, and as a sublet, and then the body shop wraps everything up, and the body shop does what? Takes responsibility for that claim. If there's a problem, the customer comes back to the body shop. So if we take it a step further and said, I'm a PDR company and, and I wanna go it alone, I don't wanna have to partner with a body shop, I wanna take the, the job in on a standalone basis, and if it needs paint and body work that I can't do, I'll sublet it to a body shop. Is that a possibility to do that, Karen? Have them, have them be the guys driving the bus? So um, we've certainly had discussions around that model, and we've been approached by, by many companies, both from within and without the province, outside the province, uh, about a model like that. And um, one of, I guess a couple of things that were a little nervous about right now, or not nervous, that's not the right word, things that we want to help understand a little bit better is that um, these changes in technology going on in vehicles and materials are not, they're not insulated to a traditional uh, repair contractor. Like there are, the PDR folks are going to have to deal with these issues as well. So when it comes to it, for, for us to, uh, to be in a position where we would consider uh, you know, uh, working directly with a PDR company. Um, like we've put a lot of effort into building a new accreditation model with new minimum training, tooling, and equipment requirements. The challenge we've got is, you know, if we've got a if we've got a prime con if the PDR firm is the prime contractor, how do we ensure that they have the minimum trains, tooling, and equipment to handle those types of repairs that come into their shop? Um, and you know this idea of of, of subletting. You know, I, I understand the traditional model is is you know is a conventional repair sublet to the PDR shop. You know, if it was to back if it was to go back the other way, um, again we come back to ensuring that uh, you know uh, we, we don't we as SGI um, 
you know, we've got it. We've got an accredited rate that we that we can pay for. If, if a PDR job gets pushed for repair, we've got an accredited rate, um, and we've got an accredited and we've got a, a PDR rate. And you know, if there's something that would be negotiated between a PDR firm and, and the body shop, which I know happens has happened in the past, and the body shop's willing to complete the conventional repair, you know, SGI will pay the accredited rate. But here's the challenge for us: we'll pay the accredited rate when the job's completed by an accredited shop. And a credit shop has the training tools and equipment necessary to fix the vehicle properly, whether it's sublet or not. That's going to be another question. So, you know, if we've got certain organizations leading or or, or quarterbacking the claim for us, you know, that that's that's a very important role in the in the claims repair process. And we'd be interested to know, like, what would a PDR firm look like that could that could manage that for us? Because I also understand that. You know, I think there's a lot of another kind of model that's out there where the body shop is actually doing a lot of the access work. So they are the ones that are doing the the uh, the R and I on panels. The PDR firm comes in specifically for the panel repair because that's where their their expertise is, and they complete the panel repair, and then the body shop puts the vehicle back together. And so that puts the vehicle back together again. And, you know, um, we're paying a certain access fee, which I understand in many cases goes to the body shop that's doing the R&I. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess we as a group are, are very, very interested to hear, uh, you know, um, solutions and, and ideas and, and, and maybe what that might look like uh, um, and serve as the basis for us moving forward to maybe continue this conversation, you know, in, in preparation for, for, for the next hail season. I'm, I'm a little poor of hearing in a way, but what I heard there was that if a PDR company was want to do uh, SGI work on their own, they would have to be accredited similar to a collision shop. Um, and if they were not accredited similar to a collision shop, then you would pay the non-accredited rate. Is that what I'm hearing, Kieran? I didn't quite understand. Well, well that. that's how it is today, right? If you're not accredited repair, like we're talking about current state, right? Like yeah. we don't have a PDR uh, accreditation program or anything today. You know, if a customer elects to go to go directly through it through a uh, uh, or elects to go through a PDR facility, and that PDR facility gets like if 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 it, if, if there is conventional repair required and it's being completed by an accredited shop, we'll pay the accredited rate to that accredited shop, even though it's being sublet. But uh, the idea is, is that, you know, that, that, that the PDR work, I guess that's kind of where, where we'd have to kind of understand what, where we're going with is that there's, there's a lot of variables in there. Um, we would be able to pay like on our, on our current matrix system. You know, I, I understand why it would be advantageous for a PDR shop to want to, uh, uh, you know, um, obviously they, they would be the ones who would get, who would get the entire uh, uh, compensation on a per dent basis uh, for the repair, which makes a lot of sense. But, uh, you know, Again, like I come back to, my concern is, is that you know, what are those? What should our expectations be for from a PDR? If a PDR shop is kind of spearheading the work, what should our expectations be around training, tooling, and equipment? And uh, you know, right now, uh, you know, unless there's unless there's some way that we could we could understand and create some delineation between what works being done by an accredited repair and what works not, where it's conventional repair versus PDR. I guess it's not it's not it's not as black and white as maybe we'd like. I guess I can put it that way. Right. Yeah. No. It's a it's a tough one. Like I can see, um, industry just kind of grew up over the last twenty years or more. Um, it's like the body shop industry. Nobody sat down and plotted out a strategy and said this is how this should work. You know, it just evolved a certain way, and uh, the way it uh, has come forward is, you know, traditionally the body shops handled the claim. The paintless debt repair company was the sublet. The, they did their work and then the body shop looked after everything else. Now, some of the PDR companies are saying, you know what, I really don't like giving a portion of my, my income away. I'd rather just do it myself. And as a body shop guy, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to be open-minded and look at it both ways. I go, yeah, I can understand that. I can understand that there's no reason that if they wanted to do that, that they shouldn't be able to do it. And, uh, you know, even though I don't really want to lose the business for the body shop industry, I don't know how we can stand in their way. But having said that, this is where it gets really sticky is that, you know, a lot of shops have just spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to become certified under the new program that's coming out in 
March of 2021. And, and some of those uh, commitments are due to the safety concerns and repair of today's vehicles. Something as simple as disconnecting a battery can cause problems. Uh, taking a mirror off, you know, there's taking a bumper off, you know, all of a sudden now you got to reset a bunch of uh, calibrations on the vehicle. Um, it, it's, it's insane that the level of technology we're at. So if we were to take that into consideration, then we probably have to look and say to the paint and standard repair companies, hey, um, there's got to be a level of, of training that a PDR company would have to meet in order to become independently certified through SGI so that they can make sure they do a safe and quality repair, just like a body shop does. Uh, on the other hand, I've had discussions with some of the paintless dent repair fellows and, and uh, you know, not all paintless dent repair is the same. Some paintless dent repair companies maybe have, they have something they call Veil certified, which is a, a standard that's been set up uh, nationally and internationally that it just, what it does, it gives like a benchmark. Yeah, this guy's capable of doing that. Um, so one of the questions I have, Kieran, like um, it, is Veil certification on paintless dent repair, is that something that you're aware of? And is it something that you'd like to see? Are, uh, is, it, is there some level of competency that you feel is important just from the paintless dent repair side that needs to be addressed? So. I'm, I'm going to answer that question, but can I just step back just for a minute and just talk about accreditation? And, 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 I, and I want to, and I know that's kind of the main reason we're here. There's a couple of questions that we collectively need to answer about accreditation to understand. One, first one is this, is what's, what's the value proposition? And I know this kind of is kind of, uh, it, it's an interesting one, but number one, what is our, um, what is our value proposition to the customer? Why would it be important for SGI, in this case, to accredit a shop to, to basically, we are, we are in a sense partnering with you and standing beside you. When we accredit you, we're, we're standing behind your name. We're putting, we're attaching our brand to yours. And from a customer perspective, what do they get for going to an accredited shop? Why is that important? What does it mean to them? And if it's from a hail perspective, what does that mean? And, you know, and I think there's a lot of good answers that you can pick up right away. Um, the, the other thing, the other thing that we need to define when we talk about accreditation is, um, you know, the, the, the idea that from SGI's perspective, I want to come back to the fact that we are essentially sh sharing our brand with you and you're allowing us to share your brand. We're going to, you know, you get on our website, you know, our branding is on your facility or, or your, or your media and your, your branding could be on ours. Um, and we're basically mutually promoting each other. Um, when, when we do that, there, there's a lot of expectations in that partnership uh, from both sides. And, you know, so I think it's something that we just, it's, it's not an easy thing to, I, I, I guess I just don't wanna brush over it and just say, well, I'm SGI credit cause I, cause I can do this. It's more than training. It, it, although that's very important. It, it's also about agreeing to a certain role type of relationship and agreeing to certain behaviors and conducting ourselves mutually. There's, there's obligations on SGI as there's obligations on, on a shop that's accredited with us. So it's a, uh, it's, um, it's, it's a two way street, but it's not just simply, uh, you know, access necessarily access to the work or promotion through a website. And that's what it is in Saskatchewan right now is, is, uh, you know, we're trying to add value to, to our, to our shops for being accredited and create, um, benefits to them for doing it. One of them is rate. And there's an, there are other things that we're working on our KPI program to promote that as well. So um, just a little bit more about the accreditation. Now, with respect to the veil, um, yes, we, we have become aware of veil. We understand that, that I think it's dented. Is, it has a contract now to supply it nationally in Canada. And they, so they would be one of the service providers. Um, you know, oh, yes, we've heard of it. Uh, we understand what it is. It, it, it is um, right now, it's my understanding of it. It's specifically a quality measure it's it, it's basically it's kind of like a, a well test where you're demonstrating that you're able to remove the uh re remove the dent from a panel all various panels effectively and they've got some very significant very uh, high tech or high tech methods of measuring the before and after to ensure that it passes it's, it's it, and, and that's great 
Um, the other elements though around it that, would, that are certainly important to us, and you're gonna hear me harp on this all the time. There is also an RNI component that is, I'm not sure if it's optional or not, but that's something that regardless of what training a shop looks at, if we were going to stand behind it and accredit it and make it a minimum requirement, there would have to be that RNI component in the training as well. So um, just something to keep in mind as we move forward. It's, it's uh, I, you know, I, 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 I understand and there's a lot of great text with a lot of great uh, uh, capabilities and you know there, there's varying capabilities but you know there's there's folks out there who do a fantastic job it's just I think that the PD being a PDR technician is, is has evolved as well just like the traditional uh, collision repair technician job and uh, you know I've heard this we're no longer that definition but well that's the mechanics job we're not getting that I the collision repair technician whether a PDR or, or a traditional method is one of the most well-rounded positions ever. I would rather have those folks live in my car than anybody else, because they, you guys have to know a little bit about everything in order to effectively complete that repair. So, you know, I think that's just seemed to be one of the elements that, at least from my first perceptions, and please don't quote me on it, but I, but I do know that it is something that even the folks at Dented had, had mentioned is a is another element to that program. And I'd be I'm actually more interested to kind of hear what you folks think of it, and uh, you know, where do you see it fitting in? Sure. You know what we can do, guys? There is a microphone in the room here. If somebody wants to come up and ask a question or make a comment, you can certainly do that. And for those of us, we got about 43 people online that are watching this uh, webcast. Uh, if you go to the bottom of the page where it says participants, you can actually uh, click on it and, and raise your hand. And, uh, or you can go to the chat roll and you can put a question in on the chat uh, and we could pass it on to Kieran. So, we encourage uh, people in the room and online, if you, if you have uh, questions or comments that you'd like to make, we'd certainly um, welcome you to step up and, uh, and put your two cents worth in, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm very happy to be able to see Merlin. I, I'm, Merlin, I'm sorry, but I had a completely different picture in my mind. I know maybe I had a pointy hat on, I'm not sure, but it just, it, it, it <laughs> Actually, Kieran, I was just looking at your picture on the screen, and you look thinner online. You should do all of your meetings online. Oh, should so. I do? Oh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> it does you well. Okay, so so that one of the questions, folks, is what does accreditation look like for a PDR company in Saskatchewan? Like Kieran says, um, yeah, the veil is a part of it. Um, we've and I've had those discussions with Jeff, uh, how they do that. But you know, in, in some ways, the veil is. Uh, it's kind of like ICAR Glow Class was for us 10 years ago. Like it was a really cool thing to have and it kind of illustrated that we were a learning shop and that we were on uh, getting training on a regular basis and that we were on the cutting edge, but nobody cared <laughs> whether we had it or not. Like you had that Glow Class sticker and, you, and nobody ever asked me one time, what's that for? Uh, today, of course, that is a requirement to be accredited uh, with SGI coming up in March of 2021. But so what does that look like with a paintless dent repair? Like Kieran says, is it just R and I of panels? Is it awareness of repair procedures? Is, is Vail a part of it? Um, you know, what, what do you guys in the PDR community see as your role to be certified? Or is it appropriate just to say, no, I'll just tag along with the body shop and they can be the accredited guy and I'll be the sublet guy. Are you, are you okay with that? You know, like uh, we kind of get a, got to get a bit of a temperature of where everybody's at in the room here. What, what are you guys thinking? Do you want to be, uh, be able to go it alone if you want to, or do you want to stick in a relationship with the body shop where they can worry about all the accreditation stuff and you can carry on with your business? Any comments on that? Somebody's raised their hand. Somebody's got a question online. Yeah, come up to the mic and then uh, it looks like we do have somebody online, but we'll do the uh, in-person one first. Is that okay? Just state your name and who you're with and uh, your question. That'd be great. I'm Kyle Berkland with uh, Prairie Dam Repair here in Saskatoon. I've uh, had a PDR retail shop in Saskatoon for the last eight years. Uh, part of the primary reason of me getting a retail shop was uh, we had a ton of hail and a couple of my body shops were like, we need our bay back, you should get your own space. So that's what I did. 
And at the time, I had a couple buddies who wanted to get some hail claims done. So I looked into getting the SGI approved certification at the time. So I got my insurance and my fire inspection and uh, did my initial hail claim and had it inspected and been doing direct repairs ever since for direct customers off their street. Um, never had any issues with that. Um, never really had any problems with comebacks. I went to a SAR meeting. I've been a member since 2012. Uh, I've attended meetings every year. Um, so in 2017, we had the big storm in Saskatoon. Uh, we had some of the bigger suppliers show up. Discounts got pretty crazy that year. And I was nervous that if discounts were going to remain that high, I would be better off pursuing my own customers directly. And so that's how I shifted my business model. I uh, contacted Neil McGregor and got Mitchell Connect and repair procedures. I've had them since 2017. I've handled all my supplements since 2017 with Connect. And uh, I recently hired a journey person to be my office manager. So he's got training for auto body. I understand that R&I is going to be an important thing moving forward. It's just the nature of the beast. Vehicles are getting more modern. There's more wiring harnesses, more connections, more sensors, just you name it, it's there. So we have to be aware of that and we do have to deal with that. Um, my personal suggestion was maybe coming up with a course with SAS Polytechnic for R&I specifically that could be marketed internationally for international students. We could sell this program and it would be comprehensive. It would handle exterior panels, interior panels, corrosion protections, foams and fillers, repair procedures, basically everything that we encounter during a repair. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. And uh, yeah, just thought I'd throw that out there. Actually, I uh, should mention too, Kyle did send me a document. That I think you spent a good amount of time on that. Yeah. Uh, very thorough. I, I didn't bring it up to this stuff at this point. I thought, oh, I'm just going to, I'll sit on that because yeah. no, cool. we want to get everybody's feedback, Kyle. Absolutely. But, you know, and I've, I've got his permission, Kieran, that uh, I can share that document with you guys. But uh, just up until now, I just wanted to make it so that anybody could lean in on the discussion and uh, that would that's one yep. document that we nope. bring forward appreciate it a lot of work that was done there and i'm just happy to be having a meeting and moving our industry forward to be honest with you tom because yep. i was starting to get a little scared like some of the stuff that we're seeing now i did a 2020 aviator there's no interior door handle it's a push button yeah. so you know hope they got two batteries but <laughs> <laughs> My kids have just figured out that some cars actually had window cranks on them right. <laughs> yeah, at one time. So yeah, okay, no, that's great. I really appreciate that, Kyle. And uh, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, can, can, I just, can I just respond? Yeah. Or just make a comment about what Kyle said. Uh, first thing is, thanks, Kyle. Again, I, I, that was great. And, and uh, one of the things that came up, and we have heard this, is that um, there used to be a lot of read, Prior to the appraisal transition project in about 2014, um, we would write an estimate for all the estimates were generally written by SGI. We'd write an estimate and we'd hand the customer a copy of, the, of their estimate. Then they would be free to uh, uh, go wherever they want. And so they would take that, they would take that file to, to wherever they wanted to, to take it to get repaired. Um, and at that point, we tried to promote at least identify which shops are SGI accredited to a website. Um, things changed with the appraisal transition project. Um, obviously, a portion of our estimates started getting written by uh, by SGI uh, or by our shop partners, and uh, that includes hail. And when that occurred, um, we had some folks give us a call and, uh, and 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 talk to us about it, and indicating that prior to us moving to Mitchell and dispatching estimates directly to customers, they actually had a lot of off the street work. Um, folks would come in and they would they would identify that this is a PDR shop and they believe that they would be able to provide them some hail service. One of the challenges now, of course, and I get this as if I was as a PDR, uh, you know, if, if I'm a PDR uh, uh, supplier, is that Essentially, the only place, if a customer asks us, 
the only place that we can offer them to go and direct them to is an accredited facility. The only ones we have are those are, are our traditional repair or is our conventional conventional repair collision repair shops. We have no PDR. Um, we do have some shops that have invested in Mitchell and we're trying and piloting. And there's a couple, we got an RV shop in there too. You know, we've got, we've got an NDA signed up with them. We've taken care of the privacy element. And, you know, we're saying like, what would it be like to, to interact with this, with these facilities electronically and looking at, at supplementations and those types of things. But even there, when a customer calls in, um, Prairie Net, you know, those facilities do not show up as an available dispatch shop. So, you know, in Saskatoon, we dispatched 50% of our help to conventional body shops. Then the estimates are written there. And they may have been, obviously, if you were a PDR shop, you, um, to gain access to those, many of it, you'd have to be associated with a body shop to get them, so to get that work. So, uh, you know, I, I do understand that. And, and I understand, like, that's probably the, you know, it's really access, the real benefit to the accreditation, I guess, and I, and I should be careful I say that, at least how I see it, and maybe we're wrong, is that is access to that retail is that basically when there is a, a file and a claim would be eligible for it, that that shop would show up as an option for our customers and we'd be able to, we're basically directly dispatching. Like in the not near future, in the not distant future, we would love to get to a place just like we do outside the province where a customer phones up and you know, we, we can globally, I wouldn't say load level, but at least provide you know, customers access to, to a shop calendar if you guys are online or whatever. And basically it's one stop. At, by the end of that phone call, the customer knows what shop they're going to, they know where they're going, what time it is. The shop has all the information that they need and, and it's, it's, uh, it's easy to, uh, to process. So yeah, that's kind of, uh, um, I understand that. I understand that and that's, that's really, where it's something that we've got to get, you know, kind of work on and, and, and see if that's somewhere we can go. Again, for you to be on that website, for us to put our name beside you, what does that mean? What do we expect from those shops? What are their skills of those facilities? Good. We do have some questions online, but we do have somebody that raised their hand. If you can, uh, Brandon, I think it is. Hey. Are you yeah. Hi, can you Brandon. guys hear me? You bet. Okay, good, good. Um, okay, I have a few things. Uh, first, uh, Kyle, what he said about Polytech with the R and I, um, I would agree with that. You know, because Kieran, you you mentioned it three times, and it's uh, it's about the R and I aspect of the uh, hail repairs, which I've been saying for years and years and years, which I think is the most is it's it's the most important part of uh, of the repair, and it's the struggle. You know, because we still, I have to remind you, you know, and I apologize, but we still only get $200 to do the r &I on a Mercedes car. You know, this is, this is supposed to be addressed a while ago. I'm not complaining, but, you know, it, it, is, it is something that we have to take care of and we have to have the proper people to do it. And we just have to have the proper amount of money allocated towards it. That's it. That's all I'm going to say about that one. Um, you know, you know as well, I've told, said this, I, I like my relationships with buy shops. I enjoy those relationships. I like to keep them. I'm not against anybody if they um, are trying to get on the list to get that direct repair. You know, I, I've done that. I've been there. I understand it. And I'm, I'm not against it. You know, as long as it's fair and people, if, if these PDR companies can get on the list and they have to uh, show that they're reputable and people, clients are going to pick them, right? And if, if they can if they could do the job and they can handle the claim, the claim management side of it and all that stuff, I, I'm not against it as long as it's kept fair and assignments aren't directed in Saskatchewan. That's what I, I don't like that idea. You know, I don't like the idea of some one company getting uh, all the claims, you know, everywhere across the country, it always ends up in a disaster. I just don't want that to happen here. Once you take that uh, genie out of the bottle, that genie doesn't go back in the bottle. So um, that, that's, that's my say on that. Um, a veil, as far as veil testing, veil is not a, it's, it's veil certification. I'm a master craftsman. I uh, veil certified my whole team in 2012 in an Ottawa storm. We hired the guys, we flew them up and it was, it was a big expense and we certified everybody. We actually certified people from other teams as well. Since we're up there, we said, Hey, anybody wants to do this? We pulled everybody in. Uh, some of those guys actually work for us now, which is great. 
So we all have this Bale certification, Master Craftsman. But in eight years, I've never, I've never used it, and I don't think I've ever told anybody really that I'm, I have it. So as much as I understand it, you know, it, but it, everybody has to understand it's not really, it's not. You didn't learn something to get. It's not saying that you have a, a, some information. It's a test. It, it's simply as that is. Can you fix a dent accurately? But when I'm hiring other techs, I hire them based on almost like what kind of job do they do? You know, I don't ask them if they're Vail certified, you know? So uh, we go through a lot of techs every year. You know, we have to hire people, depends what place, what location, if my area gets hit or doesn't get hit. So we have to hire more people. And the question I never ask is Vail certified. You know, the Polytech with the RNI is something that I, that I, I like, you know, I would like to see the raise rates raised and have some kind of certification, you know, but, you always have to remember why I, why I don't harp about this too much is because there's going to be those issues, those times where you have three cars in some small town that's a two hour drive or a four hour drive or one hour drive, and we have to service those customers and we don't turn our backs on them. Now, if you want to have somebody who's high, highly certified for the R&I, well, if there's one car two hour drive away, well, that, that person who is certified to do that R&I which we use, that's one thing that I, that I, I really a stickler on, is the people who do the RNIs for our company are, are very, are, are very qu well qualified, if you say. You know, I think Corel is the best in the country, period. Uh, no one argues about that, actually. Anyway, um, but to keep him Saskatchewan, we have to keep the, we have to get the prices, first of all. And then, but we don't wanna, I don't wanna sit there and promise that if we get a higher price that it's only these people are gonna do it. Because in the end of the day, you're going to have those small rural locations that has a, a couple of cars here, ones and twosies, what we call them. That is probably going to be a tech, a PDR technician is going to be sent up there and do the R&I. You know, so there is that aspect of it as well. But I think there's somewhere in the middle we could, we could be happy, especially for any major catastrophe, a certain level of qualification to take these cars apart. I think it's needed. Now, and, and you hit on one of the elements, uh, I think that is of a huge concern to us at SGI, is that, uh, you know, over 50%, hail doesn't, hail does uh, discriminate, right? And you're right, it does hit those small communities. Uh, and it, it does create, which is very impactful to the community, but may not be large enough to draw a, a lot of repairs to those areas. And we still have to get those, we still have to get those claims processed, right? We still have to get those services out, out either to body shops or have someone go out and complete the repairs in those locations. So, uh, you know, I think that, that that's a very good point, Brent. Good stuff. I think we've got Scott uh, Kukarishan from SAS Polytech has raised his hand. Uh, Scott, if you're able to come on to the, into the conversation, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, uh, hi, everybody. Um, I recognize a lot of the guys from uh, PDR. Uh, we had a meeting uh, with Tom, with Kieran, and the guys from SGI earlier this year. And we had discussed a lot of different areas that the, uh, that the PDR community would like to see. And yeah, we keep saying R&I. There was, you know, we talked about foams. We talked about the uh, assembly, disassembly, calibrations, pre, post scans, um, all of those things that, uh, and a, bun a bunch more, uh, women's safety, headlight aiming, uh, polishing, detailing, stain removal, corrosion protection. Um, the, the PDR community had uh, identified a lot of those things that they would like to see if there was some type of certification or accreditation going forward. And it wouldn't be just, um, online or anything like that, there would be a practical component to that as well. Uh, those are some of the things that we talked about where we could have a Saskatchewan certification uh, ongoing. Um, so if that maybe alleviates some of the conversation that's going around the room and uh, SAS Polytech has almost all of that developed already. So. Uh, that ongoing certification like in speaking to what Brennan was talking about, like when they, I guess the access fee, when it came up, how many years ago was that first decided upon? It's gotta be 20, if not more guys. Does anybody know offhand? 96. So are the cars different today than they were in 96? For sure. And uh, you know, um, 
I know probably Kieran does not want to hear this, but we probably need to look at that <laughs> and maybe re-examine re what the access should look like. Uh, I mean, I've had some guys say we should just use Mitchell flat rate time, whatever the time it is. Um, there's some people that have got questions in the, in the question role online here I'm looking at, uh, and this whole idea of pre and post repair scanning. Uh, I mean, I, I know that for many of you PDR guys, and you know this as well as I do, never had to do it, never had to worry about it. And, and yet, we don't even, in the body shop today, we don't even touch a car until we do the pre-scan, and when we're done, we do the post-scan. It's a requirement. If we don't do that, we get penalized for that. So certainly that's something that has to be looked at. But I, I like the idea, Scotty, that you guys have got uh, kind of all the criteria, and I believe, Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, ICAR did have um, kind of a, a list of classes that they recommended. They started on this paintless dent repair certification a few years back, and I think they stopped it, but I think we still have that list, don't we? Scott, are you there? You're muted, buddy. S Scott's muted. There. You, ha you have to unmute me there, so. Um, yes, um, ICAR did have, does have a course for it. Uh, what we're looking at with SAS Polytech is uh, a portion of that expanding on it a little bit, but also having a practical component to uh, show, to uh, demonstrate proficiency. Perfect. So, um, Karen, have you got a comment on that? Don't mean to. Oh, no, no, no. It, it's, it's it, like, like I said, um, you know, we see the value, we, we understand, uh, you know, and, and we brought it up ourselves about ensuring that the people working on our customers' vehicles are, are, are capable and, and trained and, and providing a quality, safe repair. Um, you know, right now, you know, some of the models that we've got right now is, is we, we put the shop, we put the shop at the, the, the accredited body shop, as, the, as we like to say, the quarterback. Um, and... I hate to say, but they regulate the quality of the repair for us, right? Yeah, we'll go out and do some audits, but in general, it's uh, that's kind of what we, we see. We rely on that body shop partner to ensure it's done it properly. Um, you know, the discussion here is, is uh, you know, are, are we, where do we go from here in the sense of, are we looking at saying, if you are if you want to complete uh, famous debt repair in Saskatchewan, you know, these are the minimum standards you must have. If not, it's, it's, it's a very interesting, I, 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 there's a lot of, I guess, and I'm probably jumping the gun here a little bit, but just trying to think of process and how does it work and how would we regulate, how would we, uh, uh, you know, ensure that, that, that we've got, we've only got the trained staff. So not only what training and, and qualifications should, should a PR technician have, but, you know, in a practical way, you know, what would that look like kind of uh, uh, rolled out and how do we track qualifications? Like so it's it's it, it's it's a it's a big issue, you know. Like right now, you've got to have a journey person on staff, a minimum, you know, and a, a one to oversee the repair. You know, at, at what point would that be something we'd want to be we want we want to look at uh, as well, or should should we be extending it to things you don't touch a GI vehicle, unless you're uh, you know either either indentured, <laughs> which I know was discussed previously, or or, or a journey person uh, technician. There's an awful lot of these types of questions, and, and how far would it extend? something like that in a famous debt repair situation. So yeah, um, the, like like I said, I, I think that this is this, this is a bunch of pad or a, a springboard for for additional conversation. Uh, you know, I'm really, uh, I'm thrilled to see kind of this group together, uh, um, you know, of, of PDR techs and, and uh, you know, and under the under the, the SAR banner, at least it's, it's created a forum for us to be able to talk about these types of things. And, uh, you know, uh, certainly, uh, you know, the last time we, we did revisit our, our, our PDR uh, rates a couple of years ago, uh, you know, and uh, especially around access fees and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's where it's required and, and supported. Uh, you know, that certainly those, those are things that we will look at. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I'd like to come back to that, to that discussion, you know, and really about those, those models. Uh, uh, it's going to be you know, what's best for my customer. Um, how do we handle those relationships when it goes push to pain? Um, you know, the, the other question 
that came up, and, and, and I know I don't want to annoy anybody in the room saying this. <laughs> I hope I don't. But uh, there's a reason that I think PDR is coming to age is because uh, I think most of us agree that we're not taking apart you know, factory seams and, 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 and removing and welding you know, and maintaining the factory, factory seals and joints. Uh, I've got probably a higher quality repair, right? If I've got the factory paint on it, uh, you know, th those types of things I'm creating those, you know, in general, we hope it's a higher quality repair where, where it can be applied effectively. Um, and, you know, from that perspective, you know, right now we look at our PDR limits, uh, you know, at which point do we go conventional and what point do we, do we stick with PDR? You know, um, there's lots of those types of things we should be discussing and helping ourselves understand. Is 75% that, you know, of cost the right number? Where we go and push push it to push the paint and push the conventional, or is there an opportunity of PDR? If, if we're all in agreement that the painless dent repair is, can, you know, in many cases can provide a high, higher quality repair, should we be looking at a higher percentage? And but then again, at what point is that? You know, is, is there concerns from our from our conventional partners with that? Uh, you know, um, I don't know. I, I guess that's the kind of stuff that I'm hoping this kind of group or forum, we can sort of explore those together. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts, you know, the, when I was first approached uh, about this concept, it was Merlin that talked to me about it. And, uh, you know, I've been thinking about it pretty much steady for the last, I've been talking to different companies, some small, some large, and uh, there's a lot of moving parts here. And um, I wish I had the wisdom of Solomon to come up with the perfect solution for everybody. But, you know, Kieran, I'm kind of thinking we, we got a, kind of one of the ace and holes that we got is we do have Sass Polytech and Scott and his team are certainly committed to help us uh, come up with a strategy and an accreditation program. Um, I'm, I'm always a little bit leery of committees because uh, ideas are usually taken down a back alley and slowly, slowly strangled to death by a committee is what I found. But uh, it, I would think that there should be a small working group that would assemble the ideas, but make them available to all the stakeholders, all the PDR companies, SGI, the body shops. I mean, we all have a, we all have a part to play in this. And, um, you know, what I guess I'm just kind of spitballing here, but could, could we put together a small group to work with SAS Polytech to come up with a, a program that we think would work? to meet everybody's needs and then bring it to the group for discussion? Would that make the most sense? I, I, I like that idea. One of the things I'd like to, to work more on first though, if that would be something that, that everyone would agree to is just, I, I want us to, to talk a little bit more collectively around um, what's in it for the shop? Why would I want to become, why would I as a PR vendor want to be uh, uh, um, accredited or, or take this training? What, what are they going to get out of it? Where, yeah. where, what are we going to do with it, right? Like, uh, where's the value to the shop? And, and the reason I'm saying that is because that sort of guides a little bit around, around some of these, some of these other discussions, right? Uh, you know, wh wh why, are, why, why are we here today talking about it? What's, what problem are we trying to solve, right? And uh, I think those are some of the things that I, I really like to sort of um, flesh out first. And then from there, kind of, that, then we take out next steps. Sorry, is that right? We have, we have a gentleman that would like to make a comment. You know, Tino from Santa. Tino, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the things there with SAS Polytech too, would that be a certification for a technician or an accreditation for a shop? Because that would be the first question. There'd be a differentiation between a certified tech and accredited shop, I would assume. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably more accreditation, Tino, is what I'm thinking. So wouldn't it be like, you have an accredited body shop, but you have a journeyman, journeyman that's certified, because that's how we understand it should be on that our side. And part of Vail would be part of that certification part. And to touch on Vail, there is a numerous amount of uh, insurance companies outside of this province that will not allow technicians even to estimate their cars if they're not Vail certified. Yeah. I do have technicians working in Pembroke, Ontario right now that had to be Vail certified that I asked if they were. Right, well, in, in the auto body world, it's, it's kind of similar in a way, Tino. We have to have a journeyman 
Red Seal journeyman technician on staff. That's Correct. key. Uh, I would probably. So he passed the test. He passed some courses. I would. And he is certified. And your I, shop is accredited after that. I'm just wondering, you know, if if you would categorize uh, Vail certification as to, similar to ICAR Gold Class, you know, which is a kind of a, a level of continuing education. That. Oh no, uh, I think ICAR is all part of it. We we agree. I. I know there's 12 ICAR courses that should be part of the program. Yeah. Uh, I myself have them. We were instructed by, again, insurance companies outside of this yeah. province. So I agree ICAR should be part of it. Just like the certification part of actually being able to repair a car should be part of it, just like a weld test. Welder shouldn't be a welder if he can't weld. Just because he's taken some courses, he should have to have a certification that he can weld a panel at least. Sure. What's more important, Notino? Um, being Vail certified or being aware of OEM repair procedures and scanning and electronic, you know, they're both. All of them the same. They're all, yeah. So, you know, at some point in time, it would Vail, would everybody here agree to it? I just heard Brandon say he's been Vail certified for eight years and it's just given him that warm, fuzzy feeling that he's Vail certified. It, well, it hasn't wanna, changed. If we go there, Brennan is actually, I asked Brennan if he was Vail certified. Mm -hmm. I needed to know if he was. Mm -hmm. So that is a question that is for him to work outside of the province in certain insurance companies. He yeah. had to be bail certified. So it's not something to make you warm and fuzzy. Sure. No, but I think we're looking at a made in Saskatchewan solution too, sure. right? So, uh, you know, it, bail, I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just, but I'm just saying, yeah. looking at it from all the aspects, it's just like uh, up until this year, Tino, we didn't have to be ICAR Gold class, but no. now that's part of our accreditation. If, if you guys collectively decide that Vail certification is part of PDR. Half the guys in here probably have it. Yeah. So who, who would I be to stand in the way of that? I, I can't. And I guess the next thing too is the only difference most shops are asking for is the ability to take claims on directly. Almost every shop in here could bill cars directly. We could have a car walk in right now. I can bill SGI directly. No problem. Right. Almost every PDR company could do that right now. So the only difference we're talking about is bringing the car being sent to us directly to do the estimate instead of having it estimated by SGI or estimated by a body shop. Right. Because everybody in here has a payee number already and they've already done that. So that's the only thing. And we want to work with body shops and for ourselves, just like everybody at the other company out there. I want to work fairly with a body shop at a fair rate. And I also want to take shot direct on work too, if I can get it towards me. Because there is some stuff like a, a door ding that we could fix and save SGI from painting a whole door, where it doesn't need to go to a body shop for a door ding. It could just went straight to the PDR shop in the first place and get done. Does that not already happen? No, because we can't have them sent to us directly. We can't dispatch. That's the like someone could walk in. You know, right? Someone could someone come up to you folks off the street with a claim. Absolutely. Sure. Like yeah, everyone right from you guys estimating it, can yeah. bring it right in to us. We could do it. We could bill it right back to you and do the whole process, scan the car and do everything from there. <clears throat> Right. Any PDR shop can do that right now in Saskatchewan if they have a PDR, a payee number, which most do. Right, right. I like my other view, you know, I'm looking at the front of him. And you do, like, he, he does cut a nice a nice silhouette there. But, yeah, that's better. That's perfect. Sorry, <laughs> kind of a smart ass. But, uh, um, the, uh, like, that, that for me is the big distinction, right? Uh, and, and for us... For us to, to dispatch directly to someone, that's where the accreditation comes. In. That's where right. we're, we're, we're putting our brand with yours. And that's the question I've got. What does that get for our customer? Go, if I send it directly to you, I know what I get when I send a claim to a body shop in Saskatchewan. I know what I'm getting because we've, we've done all that work, right? Sar, Seda, the whole group, we know starting March 1st, we'll be very clear what we can say to the customer, the benefits of the customer, why, what you get when you go there. See, that's the answer. That's the question that I want to help. And again, I, I, we've all got lots of ideas, but it'd be great to really solidify that, right? Is what, what is, what does a customer get? We're going to direct dispatch to, to, a, to a PDR firm versus going through a body shop and having them manage it. What's the benefit? And, and I can certainly think of benefits to us as an insurance, absolutely. Cause like I have a lot of those types of things uh, and, uh, and help us to kind of, to, to understand that. And like, th from my perspective, that's where, that's one of the problems we're trying to solve. And I guess that's one of the, I appreciate you bringing it up because that's one of my questions to everybody in that room. Like, what do you want out of it? Like, if, if we're going to increase your operating costs, and we're going to, you know, um, put all of these, these, these additional uh, requirements on you, 
to do business with us? Kind of what's, what, what's the end goal? What, what, what do we think we're going to get out of it? Is, is it to is it to sort of cement the industry here and create it so that maybe it's difficult for folks out of the province to come in or or you know and, and hey we love the built in Saskatchewan solution too. And if we can have our own like we would much rather do work with a Saskatchewan PDR firm that's got bricks and mortar here, especially if something goes wrong. Because <laughs> when we start calling, you know, down into the down into the the the, her, the 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 tornado belt or whatever in the states or whatever whoever it is that did the work on a customer's vehicle man we won't see him again right we're having you folks on site here really helps i just have one more question kieran too about the rnis i do agree with brennan on that point for sure uh the rnis right now you have no idea what has been taken off a car or what hasn't so i think accountability should be set like if we take a tail light out we should charge for a tail light and we should be responsible for that tail light. Um, right now you have a panel access. I don't know if I took a tail light out. I don't know if I took a hatch off a car. I don't know if I took the hood off the car. If we were got all Mitchell and eyes on all those, I think that would be a little more accountability at our end and a little more liability on our side. And we should have some kind of course that we should take that we should have all technicians take that can take cars apart safely and properly. And there should be a procedure for that for sure. And just one more point to the beginning of that, you also mentioned some shops are allowed to do Mitchell R&I times for PDR repairs if they do all of it in-house. No. 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 No, the body no, shops. are still charging the access fee. They'll get the access fee? That's yeah. it. Yeah. Because I've heard differently a couple of times too. So it's just trying to get to that point. If, if you find a shop that does it, let me know. I'd love to go back on some of our claims. Too easy to just the access time. I believe it was in our last our meeting, someone had mentioned it. There was a shop that they do all the Mitchell R and I times on it. But anyways, if that's not the case, I was wondering into that because we do a lot of work in body shops where we'd rather have them do the Mitchell R and I times and do all the cars because they are high end cars. Yeah. So it'd be better if they, I would prefer if they take the car apart because it's a way, uh, it's a very expensive part when a guy breaks a little part on it. So that would yep. be beneficial if they were allowed to do it in house to the Mitchell R and I and have my guy come in and just do the panel. So that would be something I would definitely be pushing towards too. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your time. Thanks, Tino. No, absolutely. Thanks, Tino. There's another gentleman coming up here, Karen, right away. If you just name yourself and who you're with. Yeah. And hey there. I'm uh, Dan with Denshark from Regina. I uh, just got a quick question. Uh, so when dispatches right now are going to the body shops, um, what ends up happening is if, if, if a hood or something and they deem it's necessary to replace or a roof needs to be replaced, the issue that we're running into is SGI needs the PDR company to sign off on it. Um, they can't do it themselves. So what ends up happening is we're just doing the estimates for them. So if you, if SGI is trusting the body shops to do the dispatches for you guys. Why are you not trusting us to do the dispatches if you need our sign off on it? Right, no, no, that's a good question. Um, uh, for, first thing is, is yes, the reason we want the PDR tech to sign off that it can't be PDR is because you're a PDR tech and you know whether or not it's your, your you know, it, it, the, the, the repair is, is, uh, is eligible, right? For, for, for that type of repair. Um, and that's, that's, that was kind of brought in a long time ago, unless of course the shop, if there's a shop has some, you know, there's things we can work on. If the shop has that in-house expertise, why couldn't we work with them there? Um, I'm going to come back to the dispatch again what, about, about the dispatch because, because I know, I know that when I, um, I, I know from an, as representing SGI, when I dispatch to an accredited facility, I know a number of things is happening. I know that they're, they're working, you know, as our agent, we've got an agreement in place that outlines roles and responsibilities. I know that there's minimum standards when it comes to the customer experience and what we expect. And there's minimum standards with training, tooling and equipment. And there's, and also the, the other element too, is that, you know, there's accountability there. So yeah, I think that's why actually we're talking today, right? Is what would it take to build a process like that for PDR shops, right? So what, because that, that's, what, that's what we get out of it, right? 
we get a partnership and we have a we, we basically have a, a you know there's there's a terms of reference and it describes the relationship and how we interact we have none of that with pr today and i think that honestly in response to your question the re, the answer to your question is that i think that's what we're trying to do here today is to see what would that look like if there was that opportunity from a pr perspective right um, yeah. not just training but what would it look like if uh, from a credit perspective and that's why i keep asking you guys what do you want out of accreditation what, right. what, what do you want for all that effort the issue shops are having though is that we're having to send texts out to the body shops to sign off on stuff yes yes um body shops are calling you know like can you repair this can you repair this and we're having to drive across town to sign off on stuff um it, it's it is a hassle no, and fair enough, and, that, and that's a that's a good piece of right. And yes, you're not allowing body shops to sign off on this stuff and replace it. You know, the body shops I deal with know what can be PDR and what can't be PDR. You know, there's a thousand dents on a roof. It's it's. <laughs> and, and you know something, if, if if the PD as a PDR industry, if if if, if all of the if all the PDR folks are happy to let the body shops sign off on it, you know, um, I guess our question is is that uh, you know. Um, and I'm not trying to be facetious, but you know, are we going to end up with lots of conventional repairs missing out on those PDR opportunities? I don't know. But I think that's why we need to. I think it's something we'd have to talk broadly about, right? Because it's meant to be a control. It is it's meant to say, ensure that if we have a PDR opportunity, it's actually PDR, and and if we can we can back away from that control, and if we believe that the uh, that there is enough, uh, um, uh, if there is enough, what's the right word? Uh, uh, competency out there within the conventional repair community to be able to identify what's PR and what's not. Maybe we're there. Maybe we've just been around long enough. Sure, guys can make it. Cool. But uh, I guess, yeah, that's some, it's a great question. It's something I, I don't think we're going to solve it here, but yeah, I, I, I think it's something we could bring up in that technical discussion for sure. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. You know, it's, that's the trouble with this industry, Dan, is that a lot of the stuff would just, we just made it up as we went, eh? And here we are. It doesn't make sense, but that's the way it was designed. Uh, I asked uh, Evan to put the chat comments up on the screen so the user in the hall can see some of the comments. Um, I, I've been getting some interesting uh, discussion going on there. I, if I can back up a little bit. Uh, here's one, Francois. Does anybody know who Francois is? I don't know him. Okay. It's only good to show you can fix a single dent. It's useless to know if a technician can fix a $900 roof with 10 oversize, roof rail with 10 oversizes. So that's an interesting point. Uh, Fifth Street Auto Body down in Estevan area. Where does this leave the accredited body shops that have a full-time in-house PDR technician? Would they have to qualify under a separate program? Evail. Bale shows that you can fix one dent. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one, right? Um, come, on, come on up and speak at the microphone if you don't mind. Um, Mitchell time is not the best solution for R&I, says Francois. Uh, costing for PDR related repairs. The best model is standard time, small, medium, large package with special features like sunroofs, consoles, racks, etc. But to Tino's comment, like, I would like to know if you took the door off or if you took the taillight off or if you, you know, like I think that makes sense to get itemized what was done because uh, especially in today's world, you take, you take a mirror off, you think it's nothing, but the mirror doesn't know it's in a body shop. It thinks the mirror got ripped off, right? So um, what other ones? Oh, oh. <laughs> The PDR guys want to do the easy stuff. The RNIs can be a real pain in the. <laughs> okay, let's be nice, be respectful. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, come on up. Luke? Yeah, I'm Luke Berkman. I've been doing PDR for nine years here in Saskatchewan. Um, what I proposed was that SGI offers a qualification program because they're right. I mean, the Vail certified is only one dent. But I was there when my brother got his repair number for SGI. And that was an inspection by your auditors that are already operating in this province. So I think that in order to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, to get an accepted sign off like Dan was talking about there, it should be by a recognized SGI, like certified PDR tech. So then 
if the guys that have an in-house PDR tech in their body shop, if he's certified, well, then he can sign off on it. So I think it should be something that SGI offers because then SGI is acknowledging that this person knows how to fix an entire roof that has 500 dents, or they know that that dent that I'm being asked to PDR is out of my realm. Some dents I am being told that other companies would try and fix it. I'm like, well, why would I waste my time to watch a repair fail when I know that it should just be conventionally repaired? So I think that's something that we could acknowledge in Saskatchewan is that we have a qualification program and then that's what's accepted when people want to sign off or do appraisals. And then people touched on the estimating side of things too. Um, my dad and my mom, I've watched them work quite a bit. And I think every PDR company in this room has had a substantial amount of time given to sheer estimating. And then if that vehicle gets written off, we get nothing for it. There's no time involved in what we do. And now with documentation of the vehicle, when we estimate it, it can take upwards of two hours to do a single estimate. And in two hours time, if you were to take it from a different business model, how much money are you losing for every two hours that you're estimating? So I'm not asking for a bunch. I just was hoping it would be something that would be considered. And then with the qualification of if you can do an entire repair, we could also maybe consider um, adding a bit more to the oversized dents. Because when I first started my career, it was on an ask basis. You know, I, I would meet with the adjuster there and I would say, this dent is going to be extremely challenging. It's going to take me a lot more time. And he was willing to work with me on that. So I think if there's a graduated system on like how big the dents get, because not every tech can fix that. So I hope that kind of helps, but I just think it would be beneficial if there was some sort of qualification because then when it comes to the sign offs and estimating and all that stuff, then it's accepted, right? It's not being questioned. It's like, well, no, he's been certified. Boom, SGI has the list. You already have acknowledged him. So then you just accept that signature. Good. I hope that helps. Thank you, Luke. Appreciate that. I do have Brennan back, uh, raised his hand again off, offline. If you don't mind, I'll let, he's been waiting for a bit. Brennan, do you want to? Hi, hey everybody. Sorry, uh, up again. I just things trigger in the way I go. Uh, there's something that you said as well, Kieran, and so I'm sorry because I know you're trying to get on the other subject, but you did say it. You brought it up. It's a 75% rule. We don't know where this came from. You know, the, this wasn't around year 10 years ago or whatever. Right? It's Saskatoon, we're doing cars. I never heard of that rule. One day, overnight, 75%. And uh, you know, simple things. If you have a brand new car, and if you brought your car to me, Kieran, I'd be completely convinced that um, you would want me to repair your roof, then a buy shop, chop it off and paint it. I believe that. I believe that you would, you would rather me or whatever PDR company you choose, that that's the way that you would rather go. And if it went to 76%, what would you do? What would you say? Kieran Downs, what would you do if you had a car and you like your car? What would you do? Would you rather that roof cut off because there's a 1%? difference because PDR has to be cheaper by 25%. The simple fact, simple fact is, you know, for clients, we, we, we suck it up a lot. We fix uh, dents, I'm sure $2 a dent or below sometimes when they're brand new vehicles and we want to save the paint is what we call it. So the, uh, you know, so 75%, it's something that kind of rattles me a little bit. You know, the simple fact is PDR is cheaper than conventional repairs 100% of the time. So Kieran, you and I should be on the same page and we want a PDR, anything that's PDRable. And that's simple fact. If PDR, if it's not PDRable, there's no question about it. You know, if you, even if you're thinking, ah, oh, well, you know, it just, that's it, pass on it. Um, what's a dent shark, sorry, don't know your name. I can't remember it. Uh, what, what he said about going to the buy shops to sign off on a hood. So I, aluminum hood, a $20 a dent, it is, it goes over a, quite a bit quite often. And so sometimes it goes over ridiculously, but it's whatever. So then they want me to sign off on a piece of paper or go there right on the hood, somehow do some sign off to SGI, but the hood to replace it says $2,000. And if you add up the 200 plus dents on, on it, it's $4,000. But for some reason, SGI needs us to do a piece of paper and we do it. 
I wouldn't say no to one of my, my buy shop partners anyway. What am I gonna do? Oh, sorry, uh, no, I can't do that for you. You know, no, I'm, yeah, of course, absolutely. Here we go, sign it off. But some of them was very obvious. It's like a $4,000, $5,000, $6,000 repair by PDR, by SGI prices, and then we have to sign off on it. So yeah, you know, that is something we should, uh, we should look into and, and, and get out of it. Um, the R&I, the Mitchell Times, Francois, by the way, he's, uh, he's with Nimbus, uh, just so you know, because uh, he didn't know who he is. Uh, good guy. Anyway, the, uh, the R&I, the Mitchell Times, it's not something I'm crazy about. Sometimes it's, it just slows down stuff. I like, I, I like the fact that it's, I do like the flat rates. They do have a very important thing. They both said that though. Uh, um, you know, Tom, and when you do Mitchell Times, you do, you, it is, Basically, it, you tell exactly every headlight, taillight you pulled out. You know, now you can always do the add-ons as well, which is what I prefer. I like the add-ons, um, base plus add-ons. And then you know everything, keeps it simple, and away we go. Uh, like I say, there's a lot of times when we're doing these ones and twosies, and I can't promise you that I'm gonna have a licensed body man or, or someone like that caliber that I have to do 99% of my cars, but that 1%, so charging Mitchell times is why I don't really feel it's right. You know, PDR, I feel that, you know, we don't really remove the headliner as well. We don't take it out of the car, you know, we, so I do, there are some things I'd rather have flat rate, but that's just me and that's it. Uh, now your big question. Um, oh yeah, no, Luke, I like what he said. You know, he said SGI used to come over. So we do a car, we you come in, they look at the car, they say, okay, hey, this car is a little bit banged up. Then SGI comes back after the repair and looks over and they're, they're, they're to judge. This is Saskatchewan, you know, SGI is the big boss man on the corner. And I, I like that, you know, SGI has a final say. And if some, we don't really have that much of a problem in this province in regards to this, you know, the biggest regards is people coming in and unqualified people, but like the veil certification, I don't ask anybody uh, if they're veil certified. I find out if they're good technicians, that's how I do my hiring. You know, Tino, uh, I like Tino. You know, but he'd never asked me about my VL certification. I haven't talked to him in two years, you know, but the, for us to hire somebody, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't really ask that. We find out through the word mouth and basically in Saskatchewan, what we want is we want to have good service, hail service providers, and then we will hire outside of the province, bring them in if need be on big hail events. We do need it. Um, now to go with your question, the way you, where you want to get back on the subject, I'm happy with the way things are, and I say it. You know, I, I'm, I am happy with the relationships with the body shops. I'm not against, if everybody went to go uh, to get direct repairs, I'm fine, you know, as long as it's good with my partners. I put my name on the list, I'm fine if not as well. Uh, the R&I is the only thing that I, what you say, what's in it for me, Kieran? Well, here's what's in it for me. You and I had a discussion in 2017, I think I sold a compelling story of why we need higher R&I prices. And you know, we make our money on PDR prices. I don't think $10 a dent on, on a fender, $10 fender, I don't think that's fair. I think it should be a minimum of $100 for one to 10 dents, that's what I believe. But I've never brought it up with you, I never mentioned it. That would be a way for me to make uh, more money, our company, our techs, the whole community, the buy shops, everybody. And, I, and it would be fair, but I never ever bring it up with you because I'm happy. But I'm telling you, the r &I prices, or, or it's not fair. I do appreciate, and I think as I said, I thanked you and I showed my appreciation when you give the add-ons for the hatch and for the roof rocks, it made a big difference because SUVs are, it's the trend, but still that $200 Mercedes, that $200 Mercedes, you know, that the buy shops, they still get the assignments. So you haven't went another way yet. That assignment goes to a buy shop right now, 100% of the time. So that Mercedes comes to my shop I have to have someone estimate the car, then we have to go pick it up. It takes two people to pick up a car, unless you're dropping one off. We got to take it to my shop. And at the end of the day, it's $150 left over for my shop, which I got my, my bills and the people and the rent, and then the technician. And that's where my problem is. So what's in it for me? I'm willing to qualify and jump through whatever hoops that you wanted us to jump through. I don't, the PDR, I don't, uh, I don't think a veil certification has done anything for me, but if that's the way you guys want to go, that's fine. We're all veil certified anyway. We did it years and years and years ago. Um, but I believe there should be some kind of certification just to make everybody feel better because people pulling apart these cars. You know, I look at some of these cars, I, wouldn't, I don't let my technicians touch a car. 
very rarely, only in extreme circumstances, brand new cars and all that, and pulling those airbags down, putting them up, that just gives me anxiety even thinking about it. You know, so I always have a qualified, in my eyes, a qualified technician to pull these cars apart. But you, I will, I will do whatever qualification SGI thinks is appropriate. You would know more than I, Tom would know more than I would. You know, it's not really my, my field when it comes to qualifications, right, in the body shop world. Um, but as long as you agree that we're going to get paid accordingly if we have the, the, uh, the qualifications. And I think that's fair, isn't it? That's it. Yeah, no, appreciate it. That is that's good points. Um, I, I, think you've, I think you've mirrored a lot of stuff we talked about, right, Brennan? Like it's, it's, uh, I, 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 I do appreciate that. And, and, and I hope that like what Tom's got going here and, and, and uh, you know, uh, um, who other PDR folks that are out there or sick or whatever it is, is, is an opportunity to, uh, you know, uh, to bring some of this, you know, some of these questions into a, into uh, uh, a working group, because I know Tom doesn't like committees, so we don't want the ideas to go there to die. But if there's discussion that we could have uh, uh, regarding kind of how we want to, uh, to move ahead and, and, and talk about um, r and uh, you know, what's involved, kind of what 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 taking a look at what's in our current uh, makeup for for, for uh, <clears throat> um, access fees, you know what's not included, what we have to do to make sure that it's capturing everything uh, properly to make it so it's it's worthwhile to ensure that people can can afford to have their technicians trained and certified, whatever that may look like. So no, I I again, I think this is good. This is a, this is the beginning of a of, of a process, and I, and I appreciate it. Good. Yeah. Well, I was just going to try to just for everybody. So, Kieran's really asking is what we want for an accreditation. So, we we all agree there should be some kind of certification, some kind of training, maybe other things like if Mitch was required or not. Having a location in Saskatchewan should probably be a requirement, like actually have a physical retail location with something we feel that you should have. Have an employee that works for you, a couple of employees have an actual company that's insured in the province. I'm sure these would all be great things to have for an accreditation. Um, I'm sure other one I'll be asking is put on their opinions too, what they think, because that's really what he's asking what we should have right now. What we should see for an accreditation for PBR company. So if anyone else on the chat wants to put in that instead of comments about all the other stuff, PDR guys are paid too much, they should have to do this. Why don't we just find out what we should have as a minimum requirement to be accredited? I think that's what you were asking earlier, Kieran. Well, and, and one of the reasons I'm asking this too is because, you know, I, I, I kind of like, I, I kind of, uh, I think it's like looking at any type, before you can go and establish rates and look at costs, it's like, it's, it's um, you know, you need to know what, what are your costs <laughs> as an organization, right? And and what what are those 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 things that that, that you require to be uh, uh, to be certified? And you know from there, kind of understanding, uh, you know, at that point you can kind of then step back and say, okay, you know, what what's it take to be profitable? Um, what's required for us to keep the, the doors open and, and and continue to develop our tech, our, our develop our, our employees. And uh, one of the things too, just I just want to make one comment and, and then I'll, I'll pass it on was just discussion around the, um, uh, with a certification, there is well certifications, um, just like, just like women's training, just like first aid, uh, you know, they kind of, um, uh, um, they expire. Right, and one of the reasons for that is, is and I like what was said. I, I think is that it sounds like bail really is a test, right? Um, you gain accreditation, you or you gain experience, and knowledge, and skill through doing it, and then the bail certification sort of cements and certifies third-party independent that yes, that person is capable of of, of completing a PDR repair. And uh, you know, those are one of the things. Like I know in ICAR, um, the structural steel certifications. Um, they have a they, they they have a shelf life right and there's a requirement and Scott will probably talk more about this from in his role but the idea being that you know it, there there is this I like what you guys said this comfort in having this third party independent certify that yes that person is capable of completing this very important repair 
especially in when we're talking structural steel, makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, and uh, you know, I guess that's one of the other things around around veil certification, whatever we do. You know, it's I'm hoping this isn't one time. And Tom said it multiple times. Whatever we do, it has there has to be a professional development element in it because you'll stale date, right? Continuous learning, and uh, and without that, that would be something that as we're thinking towards this, is something that would be a, that would be a requirement. Um, I believe moving forward. Wow. Wow. It's a big issue, isn't it? Uh, probably a lot more complicated than some of you that come to this meeting uh, never considered. I, as you're talking, you know, you know and, and you're right, you know, all these requirements of having an office and everything. But you know what we do have, I can count probably almost half a dozen paintless dent repair companies where it's one guy. He probably doesn't have an office. He does strictly wholesale work. Uh, I know two of them personally. They're both German Red Seal technicians. Uh, I would trust them with just about any repair. One of the guys is actually in the room here today. Uh, it would be hard to put him in a spot where, oh, you got to have an office and a receptionist. And a, you know, uh, this, so could this, could this accreditation meet like uh, what they call wholesale paintless dent repair and wholesale retail, you follow me? Because there are some guys that choose like, you know, like what Brennan was saying, like he, he can go either way. He can do a wholesale or, or retail, it doesn't matter to him. Some guys are just strictly wholesale and they have partnerships with body shops. Some of these guys are in rural areas of the province and they got good working relationships with body shops. If we put a requirement for those guys to have an office and a receptionist and all this kind of, we would be putting them out of business. I don't think that's, I could tell you right now that part, part of the problem, and that's a, I don't mean to say it as a problem, but part of the issue is that you know, SGI, as a government run insurance company, because there's political ramifications to that too, putting the guy out of business. We, we did town hall meetings, Karen tell you last year, we did town hall meetings in all the major centers where there's an SGI claim center. The first one was in Regina. And at that meeting was a small town body shop that didn't even have a certified journeyman technician in, on its staff, on its payroll. But they had connections to the NDP party. And the next day, SGI and the SAS party are trying to put small town body shops out of business. It was, a, it was almost a public relations disaster, Kieran Taya. And, and I'll tell you, when, when that hit the news, it went all the way to the legislature in Regina. And I don't know if Ryan Smith is on the call or not, but maybe Kieran can speak to that. It's, that's an issue that, like Kieran and I talk, this is a different ball of wax here in Saskatchewan. There's a lot of small one-man shops that do great work and have great relationships with people. And you'd be, you'd be messing with their livelihood wouldn't be a good thing, I don't think. You want to speak to that, Kieran, at all, or just... I, 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 <laughs> I can say this. Uh, I, I, I'll say this is that uh, um, uh, in Saskatchewan we are unlike any other jurisdiction. Even Manitoba, a vast majority of Manitoba, you, people go, "Ah, you're the same as Manitoba." No, we're not. Ma Manitoba, and you look at the body shop industry. There's a belt between Brandon and Winnipeg, and it's thick in there. And that's that's where those those repairs are occurring. Yes, there's smaller towns out there, but they're not like ours. We have we have reasonably reasonably large uh, um, uh, you know rural communities, and we 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 need that distribution of shops. Our, we, we, we need our independent repairs. And, uh, and I think we've, we've been we've strong about that right from the beginning, regardless of what we're talking about, conventional repair or even PDR. And, and we know, you know, like I said, hail doesn't discriminate. It's gonna hit anywhere. We need, to, we need customers to be able to access those services. So it's, it, it, it's a tough one. Their passions are ignited. 50% um, of our repairs take, out, take place outside of a, of, of a major center. Uh, you know, uh, of our claims, at least I shouldn't say repairs. And, uh, you know, so it's there, there's a lot of customers in those small areas. And, and it's like, how do we, how can we effectively, uh, 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 you know, provide that, that customer service? And that's, I guess that's why we're here today, because we want to, we want to understand what, <laughs> we're also here to say, what can PDR 
do for us and how can we work with PDR to ensure that we're, we're getting the best, the best service for our customers. Right on. Kyle, got another speaker here, Karen. CC Hale. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so basically just wanted to touch on the, uh, the whole thing about having to have a bricks and mortar location. I think what Tino is talking about there is that if you want to be SGI accredited to receive an assignment directly to your shop, how can you do that if you're, if you don't have a shop? I'm not saying, you know, I think going back to the one question about like a multi-tiered approach is the way we have to look at this. I know lots of awesome dent guys who make a great living going around to small town Saskatchewan, body shop to body shop. I don't think those are the companies that are necessarily looking to receive dispatches. And do they need then to have all the qualifications that we're discussing to, to receive an assignment directly if they're always working under an SGI accredited shop? I would say probably not. You know, our business model in Saskatoon, we've had a bricks and mortar in Saskatoon since 2011. Um, it's always been to work with a body shop, with our body shop partners. I'm not 100% convinced that even if I have the option of, of getting an assignment sent to me that I, I, would, I would do that. There, there may be instances in, in rural Saskatchewan where it would make sense, but you know, I don't want to become instant competition with the body shop partners who have fed me for the last nine years. That puts me in a tough spot and not something I'm really, really keen on doing. But if you do want to go down that road, I agree with what's, what's been said here. You have to have the tooling, the education, all that kind of stuff to make that happen. Um, whether it, you know, the scans, um, having the ability to do calibrations or, you know, sub that part out, just making sure it's done properly. Um, you know, in Alberta, we do receive direct assignments where we handle the claim start to finish and, and sub out the conventional component of it. Um, I don't know if it's better, like <laughs> it's, it's all the same, you know, at the end of the day, the car has to be repaired properly. Um, the r &Is are always a struggle. Uh, we're sending, you know, the hail in Calgary this year was, extremely severe we're sending cars out to dealerships to get calibrated multiple times a day because you are taking all four doors off the car um you know when thing when you start doing those extensive on our eyes going back to that point uh, we definitely need to be compensated a little bit more uh moose john 2016 you know we would do a honda civic where you would take the hood off take the trunk off take two doors off take tail lights headlights bumpers for $200 and I agree with Brendan, I agree with everyone that's been talked about, that's definitely something we need to uh, address because it is becoming from a safety aspect of it, if, if the dent on your hood isn't maybe 100%, that's one thing, but if your car is not recalibrated and that ADAS system is not working properly, that becomes a huge safety issue that, uh, that you know, Dent companies, SGI, SAR, we all, all got to work together to make sure that the cars are being fixed properly. But uh, I think at the end of the day, it's, a, it's all about a multi-tier approach for the PDR companies. And, and in terms of accreditation, if you want to re be able to receive dispatches, you got to put the time in to make sure that you're doing the cars properly. If you're content doing what you're doing, going around to body shops, falling under their accreditation, maintaining those relationships that a lot of these guys have had for 10, 15, 20 years. Um, I don't know, you know, if it's not broke, why, why fix it kind of scenario. So I think it really comes down to a, a multi-tier approach on how the dent companies want to uh, operate their business. Um, and I don't know if anyone in here should be able to tell the next person how they should operate their business. If they want to do body shop stuff, Cool. If you don't want to do hail, all you want to do is door dings for dealerships. Cool. You know, if you want to get assignments, cool. Just we got to have the training. Um, you know, if you want to take that next step up and play with the big boys, you got to fall under the same accreditation and and have the same training that all the body shops have had to go through and, and make sure your cars that you're leaving your shop are repaired properly and safely. So, that's it. Great. 
Thanks. Very hey, much. I appreciate those comments. Uh, and one of the things I just want to say quickly is, uh, um, you know, it's 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 an opportunity. You know, we don't want to be forcing a model on the industry. You guys know what works best, <laughs> you and how what you need to do to maintain your profitability, and uh, you know, and to have and and have the workflow and, and when we get that and if there's an opportunity to to, to to build a model that works for everybody and doesn't adversely affect uh you know uh some of our partners then that's where we want to go that's our mandate bob harv we've got one more speaker here karen hi karen hey, Harv. imagine that um I've got a couple calls from some body shop back to here in Saskatoon and around the rural areas because I was involved in the last meeting that Tom's internet kind of crapped out on our PDR stuff. I think um, the guys that are coming out to the rural shops that they have relationship with uh, collision shops already where we're doing the estimate form, we're doing everything all at work for them. What we don't want to see as a collision shop owner for myself is I don't want to see some Great big company, come in, rent the rink, come and fix a bunch of cars, and uh, then they're gone, and then our local clients are having trouble getting warranty work done or any issues resolved. They're trying to get in touch with them because most of the, the claims that we'll do by, by, from Hale are local people that we see in the grocery store all the time, and, and I don't want to have some huge company come in, rent my rink, and clean up a whole bunch of claims and we don't make, I don't make a ton of money on, on, on hail. Um, we make a certain percentage, but we do a lot of work for it too. We make sure everything's all done right. We make sure everything's all calibrated when it leaves. Um, we do all that ourselves and we work with the PDR techs to make sure it's done right. And I, I just don't want to see the shops cut completely out of this, especially in the rural areas. There are the shops in the city that have the setups already. We, we just don't want to be cut out by the, Huge companies that kind of just run us over and pull margins out, or however they want to want to look at it. I guess that's that's my point. Thanks, Harv. Hey, and Harv, uh, the camera does good things for you too. Looks like you're you're must be running or something or keeping trim. <laughs> oh, yeah. Working out. Good. Well, Karen, thanks again uh, for leading in on the discussion. Uh, not sure what the next steps are, um, you know, based on uh, some of the stuff I heard, we could almost leave things the way it is and carry on, or we need to put some type of a thought process to get to in place to get an accreditation. Uh, we are Hi. fortunate, sorry. Hi Tom, this is uh, Troy from uh, SGI. So for those who don't know me and, and uh, my, my senior leader is, um, Sean LeBlanc and he's on the call as well and you know we we've enjoyed sitting in on some of these conversations and just listening to you guys and uh, the passion and the excitement around you know your what you do and how you do it is is extraordinary and I think you know it's it goes a long way to celebrate those things and and to participate in the conversations from you know what Kyle mentioned to what Brendan was talking about um, it's really enjoyable uh, I think what I would like to say is that our team on the partnership side of things, um, you know, Kieran has invited us to these conversations for a reason. And that's because we're gonna be helping with, uh, with strategies, identifying what we do in, in regions, what happens elsewhere in Canada and those types of things. And, and we hope to, you know, engage with the industry a bit more. So um, really appreciate getting to see some faces and learning some names. And I hope that people on this call um, you know, even Scott at, at, uh, at uh, SIAST and everybody who kind of contributed, we would love to, um, uh, to, you know, chat with you, get a good understanding and, and engage with you guys and learn more from you as we start developing those strategies. So, you know, I'm really just asking if, if that's, if you guys are open to that, open to uh, hearing from our group and, and having some conversations. You mentioned some committees and those types of things. Maybe we don't, have to get into the committee uh, world and, and, and have some anything formalized, but we can certainly put together a team here that, that's reaching out and having the, the right conversations with the right people and, and uh, moving the right ideas forward. So um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, 
uh, speak up and, and join in the conversation and say thanks for having us and hosting this. And it's been uh, really enjoyable um, listening to you guys. Thanks, Troy. Troy and Sean, are, they look after SGI Canada outside the province of Saskatchewan and uh, their expertise has been invaluable the last uh, few months. So thank you. Um, we're pretty much out of time unless Kieran wants to just hang around for the rest of the day. I'm sure these guys will talk your ear off if you let them, Kieran. Um, but I think um, what, I'd, what I'd like to do is I'd like to contact Scott Christian once he gets a minute there and we can maybe go over that information that he has. And that I would do is I would send it out to the group and to SGI. And uh, maybe, you know, we don't need, like I say, it's not that I don't like committees, it's just that sometimes a committee just destroys an idea. But it would be nice to have a representative from the body shops, representative from the PDR world, from the insurance world, and, and try to put together, you know, what does that structure look like? You know, it, it's, it, we, we've got a whole bunch of different size shops here from the single guy shop to multinational firms and, and I think everybody deserves to have their voice heard right so uh, if you guys are open to that if Kieran if you're open to that I, I could kind of get the ball rolling and uh, uh, just so that we kind of have a, a baseline to start with and work from there I'm, I'm quite happy if somebody else wants to chair this thing um, I'm I work 20 hours a week right Terry so that's it <laughs> anyway, if you're if you're in agreement with that, Kieran, I could kind of maybe get the ball started there and put some people together. Well, I, I and, and I think I guess I want to come back to what Troy said is that uh, um, that I, I I think we've got a little bit of momentum here, and it would be nice for us to to at least you know, as Troy said, have the right folks talking to the right people, and uh, and if we can identify. On, like on your end, like you said, a, a group or a team that may be someone that we could uh, we could work directly with and uh, uh, to kind of at least continue the conversation. It, you know, regardless of where it goes and whether or not there's accreditation agreement or whatever, there's there's more to this than just accreditation, right? We're talking about we're talking about everything from uh, you know uh, opportunities to to look at some of the technical elements and 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 how technology is impacting you know the traditional. PDR access <laughs> idea and what that might look like going forward and, and, and training and certification. I, I think these are, these are all great things, you know, either as, with an assort, with accreditation or without. And of course, you know, and then of course the other piece is looking at, you know, are, are there these retail, direct retail or DRP opportunities or uh, dispatch opportunities for shops? I think there's lots of good stuff and, and, uh, and we're, 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 I think Troy had mentioned, like we're open to those discussions. We enjoy them. We, we like connecting with you guys and uh, we, we'll, we'll take it from there. So yeah, I, I think we're aligned. Troy, is that fair? Am I, am I on the right path there? Unless he's gone. You're muted, Troy. Troy Kolish. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, Kurt, Kieran, exactly right. And um, no, you're bang on. And, and you know, we, we can lead and we can follow and we can uh, participate whatever, whatever the ask is. We're here to support uh, uh, our, our both our, our partner partners, our business partners and, you know, the, the customers at the end of the day to, to get the best service possible. So appreciate the uh, appreciate the ask there, Kieran. Good. Good. Okay. Nothing else. Um, I want to thank uh, SGI, Kieran, and his team for leaning in. I want to thank the PDR guys for coming out. Um, I think there's a lot, a lot of work to do here. And uh, we just want to make sure that everybody's treated fairly and, and understands that we are in a kind of a very unique marketplace. And Scott, I don't mean to lean on you too heavy, buddy boy, but uh, uh, I'm going to need you to help us out a little bit with the information you have on uh, painting this debt repair accreditation. Thank you. I see a thumbs up from Scotty. Thank you. Anyway, I think uh, we're done. I'll let Kieran get back to uh, his office and his routine. And, well, I'm working uh, on that presentation for tomorrow. Are you? Right well, I gotta on. get it. I'm just starting it. No, I'm a little further along than that. I just got an email that's two pages long of questions. Should I send it to you? Well, we should, we should be sharing them all if there's people have taken the effort and the time we might as well let's, let's have a look at them right and we'll i think talk. some of them some of them sound like they're just kind of you know pitches yeah. <laughs> up in the air which is interesting exactly exactly 
Anyway, thanks again, guys. Uh, you know, one of the unique things about the Saskatchewan marketplace and anybody that's from outside the province will tell you, um, you know, we don't always agree on every little thing with SGI, but at, at least we're talking and, and we're communicating. And, you know, we, if we fall, we try to fall forward anyway. And uh, I think we've made some headway in, in terms of communication. Bring in Troy and Sean on from SGI Canada has just added another whole element to that discussion. So um, we feel very- I, I, think, I think it represents the importance of our partnership, right? Like yeah. there's a lot of, like, like SGI, we're, we're investing heavily in this, right? And, and uh, you know, we're, we're bringing in some, uh, um, uh, you know, moderately paid guys, I guess, <laughs> but the Sean and those guys are, 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 are important elements and they, and they do participate in the strategic developing strategy of our organization. And like to have them on is just a gift and, and it really will, like it, it'll, it'll ensure that, you know, a lot of those discussions and decisions that are made, it will help expedite them. So it's, it's, it's good all around. It's a win for both of us to have the partnership team join us. So it's good. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Uh, the trade show is going to start right away. Uh, Kieran, you're going to miss our, we're having turkey supper tonight at six o'clock. So it's like a, a traditional prairie fowl dinner. So uh, those of you that are here, you want to come and join us for supper tonight. The trade show will be open. There's a cash bar. Kieran's gave me his credit card and uh, we'll be... Uh, hey, Terry. Terry, can you can you get me a, a swag bag when you're through there that I can't do? Look at you. He says yes. Some he pens and stuff. I like it. Good. So uh, so we'll we'll break now and uh, check out the trade show and uh, supper tonight at six o'clock. And uh, tomorrow morning we have uh, our AGM. Uh, Kieran uh, got pushed back from the eight o'clock slot till uh, about uh, nine o'clock, I think. Right. So, yeah. Uh, we got a couple of guys from out of, out of town that need to be up uh, early so that. So Karen has graciously given us that time. Anyway, thank you guys. Thank you, Karen. And uh, I think we're done here now. Thanks. Bye.